In today's build, we're going to be knocking together this saw till. I'm way overdue for some better handsaw storage. This build was a blast. Plans are available. Here we go. This is a really good board except for where it looks like it was hit with a forklift, so I take a little time to plan out my cuts and I'll show you how I make the most of that damage section in just a minute. Question for you, do you regularly use handsaws or are you kind of in the research phase of considering it? And if you do use them, how do you currently store them? Comment below and let me know. I cut everything to rough length using the best pieces of wood for the long sides. I can't use the full width of this board, but I planned it out to rip down into more narrow strips to glue up and add a little bit of width to my other boards. As I'm sawing, I flip the board and cut from both sides, which helps keep the cut straight. Once I'm getting close to finishing the cut, I turn the board end for end and saw from the other side and it looks like this board was just ready to fall apart. <laughs> that worked out. A line on the face will help line things up during glue up. This is touching on both ends with a big gap in the center. At first the plane is only going to touch on the two ends and I'll keep going until I'm taking a full length shaving. I also check that it's straight with the edge of the plane. This is going to be one of the shelves, and the longer sides get the same treatment. I just apply a little glue, give it a little rub action to spread the glue, and clamp it. Now with all these panels glued up, I'm just gonna give them a quick clean up. I knock off any big glue spots with a chisel, then I just give it a once over with a hand plane. These should be flat, but I just double check with the winding sticks. I give it a face mark, and then I'm gonna put an edge on the board. After that, I'm going to take it to final length with the shooting board, then dial in final width, and these boards will be ready for joinery. First, I'm going to gang up the two long sides and flush them up. I'll clamp it together and start the joinery layout. I'm going to quickly run through the dado and twin tenon joinery for the shelves here, but I just made an entire video that's really thorough going through step by step exactly how to cut this joint. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link to it in the description. I use a chisel to form one wall of the dado. Then I'll set the board against the first wall and mark out for the second wall. With the second wall formed, it's then going to be removing the waste with a chisel and a router plane. And the last step for the stopped dado portion of this is to square off the front edge with the chisel. It's always worth test fitting. I want it snug but not too tight or the wood on the walls of the dado could break off when fitting the dados or the tenons. I mark the mortises on both sides of the board until I have this arrangement. I knife these lines and then I extend the dado walls from both sides of the board to begin creating the mortise.
Before chopping all the way through, I take a chisel and pare down on the short sides, and I go all the way through here to avoid any wood breakout issues. The long sides where the dado was extended are already done, so then I just quickly pare down on the short sides. I line the shelf up to my wood block slash camera tripod, seat it in the dado, and get ready to mark out with the tenons. I'll saw down on the waist side of the line. Then I'll switch to a coping saw to remove the center waste. Fret saw, what do y'all think? Is it worth it? If you've tried both, let me know. Knock these shoulders off. Chisel down to the baseline, going halfway from one side before flipping and going halfway from the other side. Then a test fit, followed by trimming on any areas that are a little too tight. Once we're in business and cooking with Crisco, I mark the protruding tenons with a pencil and then chamfer the edges with a chisel. This board looks like it should go right in the trash. With that massive knot and the crazy grain, I know ahead of time this thing's gonna give me some issues. But we're not made of money over here, so I'm gonna use this for the cross braces on the saw till, and I'll show you the issues that we run into that happens really anytime you use wild wood and how to rectify it. The saw is binding in the kerf, and I'm not far enough down yet to be able to fit a wedge, so I just resaw down the kerf. Once I'm down a little further, I stick a wedge in the kerf to open it up. Not only is this board binding in the kerf, but it's also warping in the other direction, so we're going to have both crook and bow to deal with. I flip the board and finish the cut from the other side. And I'm left with the reward of a nice little seesaw. With the hump on the top, I support the gap with a wedge in the middle. Or starting with the hump on the bottom, I support the gap at the end. With small boards where the defect is so easily flexed out by a little bit of pressure, it really doesn't matter which way you start. Just get one side flat, flip it, and do the other side. To flatten this edge, I'm going to start by taking off that hump in the center with a scrub plane. With the cross braces prepped and ready, I'm going to lay out for their recesses. That's my baseline and this is me driving right past the exit. I'm not going to sweat it. Oops. Definitely nothing compared to my first dovetail cherry cabinet where I accidentally chiseled a leading edge on all the dovetails on the outside face of the tailboard instead of on the inside. In the comments, tell me one of your goof ups that you never forgot. Now with the recesses cut, I'm going to trim the cross braces to fit.
and onto laying out a couple of key points and shaping the profile. After sawing out the rough shape, I refine it with a spoke shave. I love this profile. Most of the tills I've seen have been squared off dovetails at the bottom. What do you guys think about this design? After transferring the profile to the second side, the only thing to really mention is that I try to saw above the line on the second side. The two sides can be ganged up and worked together to get them identical, but I decided they were already close enough for me. So I take out my number 5 eraser and clean off all the pencil lines and markings. Now I go ahead and glue up these shelves using old brown glue liquid hide glue. Because of the protruding tenons, I use clamps to seat the joints to avoid damaging the piece. Take off the clamps and check for square. It was off just a little bit, so I stand it up and compress the long diagonal. And again, on these cross members, I'm going to seat the joint by squeezing with a clamp to avoid damaging it with a mallet. The protruding edges are going to be a job for my flush cut saw. Next I need to make a saw rail rest thing and I round over the front edge starting with the scrub plane. I need to quickly square off one edge to mark the other edge for final length. I cranked this out on my table saw. Another option is a custom fit kerf like over here. 